In this section we're going to be talking about the addition and multiplication properties. This is your very beginning introduction into solving equations. Now, before we can learn to solve an equation, we have to remember what the word solution means. And if you'll remember, you've been doing these before, a solution is an answer, basically. If we want to know is 6 a solution of this equation, it is a solution if you can replace the variable with 6 and it makes a true statement. So let's see if we can do that. If we were to put rewrite our equation and say, well, x, whatever that is, minus 8 is supposed to equal negative 2. Now, they wanted us to use 6 instead of x. Now we need to see if that's a true statement. That 6 minus 8 would be negative 2. So negative 2 does in fact equal negative 2, so it is a solution. Saying that it is a solution of the equation means it made this the mathematical sentence true. Now, before we actually begin learning to solve the equations ourselves, there are a few things that we need to talk about. I want to go back and talk about just simple addition and subtraction. Whenever we started learning how to add and subtract, we knew that 2 plus 3 was 5. Generally, we knew this because we had, you know, two little trucks or cars or whatever it was, and then we added three more to it, and then we counted them up and said, well, we've got five of those things there. But then as we got a little bit older, we realized that you could go backwards to check yourself. If addition moves forward, subtraction goes backwards or undoes the addition. We know then that 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. Well, when we look at equations, this is going to be a very, very, very important concept to understand that if you go forward with one operation, you can go backwards with the other one. So let's look at an example of that. I found this really nice pan balance online and I want us to look at it and so you can see exactly how this works. We have our equation here that says 2 plus 3 on one side of the equal sign is 5. Now this is balanced. Every time we deal with equations we're going to be talking about keeping them balanced. If they're not balanced then they're no longer a true equation anymore. Now, if I were to subtract 3 from the left-hand side, do you see now this equation is no longer balanced? But I can keep it balanced by subtracting 3 from the left side also. As long as I add or subtract the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's like adding or subtracting the same thing to both sides of a balance. Now, if I were to add 9 to this side of the equation, you see it makes it much, much heavier. In order to balance it out, I'd have to add 9 to the other side. Now we have a completely balanced equation. Let me go back to uh, my list here where I was. This is where we were. So we did we know that if we were to subtract 3 from the left side, we could subtract 3 from the right side. Now we've taken away the same amount from both sides, which will cancel that out, and now we have 2 equals 5 minus 3. This is the way that the equations are going to work when we solve them. Now with multiplication, it's really the same thing. If multiplication goes forward, then the opposite of that would be division. So 15 divided by 3 is equivalent to 5. We can do this also if we, if we multiply by 3. The way to undo that, or the opposite of it, would be to divide both sides by 3. As long as we do the same thing to both sides, we can get away with that. We've not created an imbalance. Uh, times 3 divided by 3 undo each other. They're the opposite operations. So we have left 5 is equal to 15 divided by 3, which we knew to be a true statement. The most important thing here is to always remember that the equations have to stay balanced.